All right. Well, hello. My name is Dr. Phil Garrison, and today I've invited uh, Dr. Yaron Seidman of the Hunyuan Institute to speak with us about the six stages of the Shanghan Mark. So I'd like to welcome Dr. Seidman, and I, I look forward to talking to you about, about the six stages. So my first Thank question is, for having is, me, Phil. Is, is a very broad one, which is, what is, for, for new students of the Shanghan Mun, how would you recommend they approach the six stages? Uh, well, I think uh, it's a good question, which is uh, quite difficult to answer. Uh, might have, you know, consider a few different levels or a few different issues. But if I want to put it simply for new students, uh, my recommendation is to do it, uh, you know, not the short way and easy way, but rather the long and hard and more fulfilling way. In other words. Uh, when I started learning the Shanghan Lun, things, things seem to be very simple and easy. I mean, it's not so easy to learn, but easy to understand, meaning there are six parts or six depths to the disease. There is a bunch of formulas and a bunch of symptoms, and if you can remember them, then you're pretty good. Even though it's very difficult to memorize the formulas and the lines, but understanding the concept is very short and easy. Actually, within one minute, I already explained it fully. It's like some disease is more superficial, other disease more deep, there's a bunch of formulas and if you remember the symptoms you're all good. But uh, over the years I felt for me it was kind of very difficult because I struggle with understanding the concept even though there are formulas, there are diseases, you try to match them but then it was my challenge to try to understand more deeper what does it mean to have a Tai Yang disease, what is Tai Yang, what is Yang Ming, so my recommendation for new students is not to stop at the short, easy way, but rather try to dig deeper and contemplate into the meaning of things. When we think about the six stages, we typically think of opening, pivot, and closing. Can you describe those movements or those motions or those um, states a little bit for the class? Uh, well, you know, there are different opinions depending on which uh, commentators you follow throughout history. Each one had his uh, explanations. And I have my own here. Of course, I can just share what I feel is right. So it's not necessarily what these and those commentators said. But I think that when we talk about the six stages, it's simply a way to try to dissect understanding what life is or how the principle of life is working, how is life unfolding into compartments to try to make it more tangible. So in other words, instead of me just telling you, look, you have life, fine, I have life, but how, how do I make medicine out of it? How do, when I see a patient, what does it mean? You look at someone has a headache, having life as a principle is intangible. So separating this life principle which is a cyclical motion unfolding what I call unification and separation meaning we go to sleep we wake up we go to or the energy goes into unification and then it separates it goes into unification it separates when we divide this action into compartments this cyclical motion into compartments this is where you have the six different departments Tai Yang, Shao Yang, Yang Ming when we start to describe them, answering your question about the pivot, opening and closing, what it actually describes is how the body is separating out to the outside, how it transforms to start closing down, and this is on the young side of the circle, meaning on the revealed side of the circle. When you go into the inside of the body, into unification, there's also a process. How it starts the process of going into unification, this is called opening. How it starts to transform itself from closing to start opening up again, this is called pivoting. And how to start separating still within the yin, within the concealed, that you can't see it, this is called closing of the yin action. So if I put it for you here, let me just change the view. So when I talk, it's kind of hard to follow what I'm trying to say, but if I 
draw it for you, maybe it will be easier. So when you look at the cyclical motion of our life, which we call a unification separation action, meaning going into unification is at the bottom of the circle, and going into separation is at the top of the circle. Uh, let me just type it here. Unification and separation. This is the two actions that we go throughout our life that unfold every day, every night, every day, every night. If you go, when we talk about the, the uh, opening, closing, and pivot, you cut this circle in half. The bottom half is the concealed part, like what we call the three yin. The top half of the circle is the revealed part. This is what we call the three yang. The yang means you can see it on the outside. The yin means it's already happening inside. You can't see it. When we specifically talk about the opening part, that means this. When the yin start, this is called opening of yin, which in our language will mean the tie-in. The pivoting part, where it starts to change from unification into separation, happens here at the bottom. This is what we call Shao Yin, or the pivot. The closing part of the Yin, where this action stops, it, it is actually the same thing as start opening, but you can't see it. This is the Jue Yin part. This is called the closing of the Yin. So the opening of the Yin is the Tai Yin on the right side. This is where the Yin action start happening. Meaning it's concealed, you can't see it, it starts happening. At the bottom of the circle, this is where the pivot happens. Meaning you go into unification, but now you need to get out of it. This is the Shao Yin meaning. And the closing of the Yin action, which is one and the same as beginning of the opening, is the Jue Yin part. Now when we start talking about the opening, closing and pivot, this starts to be also a little bit of an issue here with the three Yang. So, but uh, the way I devise the circle is that the Shao Yang is here, we, which we call the small Yang, which in our in the Neijing language is the pivot, and then the Tai Yang is the opening or the separation instrument, and the Yang Ming is the closing of the Yang or the starting to conceal, even though it is still revealed. This is just on a principle level, and of course we can go deeper and deeper into the practicality of it, what are the organs, how do they look like, what do they do, and so forth. But this is just to answer your question, at least the way I see it, what's the meaning of the opening, closing, and pivot? It means they represent actions on the either revealed side of the circle or the concealed side of the circle. That's what it means. Well, your explanation is so unique. I'm, I'm very grateful that, that you're sharing this with us. Can you, can you talk a little bit more about the idea of yin and unification and yang and separation? Yeah, so basically yin and yang, uh, at least the way I see it, is a representing of this same one life principle. But again, we try to divide it into two and then we divide it into six. It's actually all trying to come make compartments of this, out of this one principle we call life. So the way I understand yin and yang, which is a, of course the most fundamental concept for Chinese medicine, this, this grasp is less so in a materialistic view of uh, dichotomy, meaning there is day and there is night, there is cold and there is hot, there is this versus that, this is a dichotomy way of seeing things. But rather I'm following more Zheng Qing'an from the Fire Spirit and his teacher Liu Yuan from the Huai Xuan School, this kind of thread. So it's not that it's all really I'm making it up, but it might sound new to many people, but, but it is really not my invention. But rather the idea that yin and yang, here is the discussion about water and fire, which means the yin and the yang lines are being merged together when we're alive, or the heaven and the earth principle is merged together this is the meaning of life. So when we talk about yin and yang, it's really just using here for a moment the trigrams from the I Ching. It's not really a talk about heaven trigram and the earth trigram, which you can see in these two trigrams, Qian and Kun. This theoretically will be a pure state of yin and yang where the yin and yang are not merged together. Some will call it the pre-heaven state before there's life formed, other 
we'll give it all kinds of definition. But really what we try to talk about in medicine is this yin and yang merged together. This is the description of life. And of course the two trigrams that represent it are the fire, which you can see here, or the Li trigram, and the water trigram, which you can see here. When you look at the water and fire trigram, you see that the yin and yang lines are merged together. It's not like the heaven and earth trigram, which is like two separate entities. But rather, yin and yang are always mixed together. So when we try to figure out yin and yang in life, basically we try to talk about water and fire trigrams and all the transformations in between. The water trigram that we see here at the bottom, this is a description of a certain situation which in the regular language will define it as the heaven principle is being submerged into the dead body. The dead body is this trigram which is the earth trigram meaning our body before there's life or when there's life not involved with it together it's a piece of earth like the rock and it's described here by three yin lines which have no life to them or no heaven principle to them or no movement. These are all the same synonyms. Movement and life principle or heaven principle is all the same thing. So Liu Yuan says, and Zhang Qing'an follows him, his student says, when we start talking about the real life of principle, it is when the heaven or the middle line in the heaven trigram goes into the earth trigrams and therefore it makes the water trigram. Like you start seeing a yang principle or a heaven principle submerge into the dead body, this is the meaning of the water trigram that you can see here at the very bottom. This is the water trigram at the very bottom. So when we start talking about the yin function, which you just asked about, it is understanding how is the heaven principle or the constant motions in heaven. This is called the heaven principle. The heavens are always in constant motion. We call it constant in Chinese or chan. This constant motion, how is this becoming part of my body? This is called the water principle or the Khan trigram. In the Qing dynasty, they used to use that kind of a language like the dragon is submerging into the water. The dragon here describes the heaven principle being submerged into the body to create this water trigram. This water trigram, this is what we call the yin. What is the yin of the body? It's not the liquid, it's not the the cold, there's no cold. The cold in the body means dead. But rather it's the heaven principle being submerged into the body. This is the most fundamental in understanding uh, what yin is. Now when we talk about what yang is, here we use the fire trigram, which is this trigram here. The fire trigram has a yin, Liu Yuan says, the fire trigram has a yin sediment in it, meaning you start talking about now utilizing the heaven principle that is in the body, right? The unification part and the yin part, when we talk about yin, is how heaven principle goes into the body. This is called yin. When we start talking about yang and fire, is how do you use this heaven principle now and expresses it? Like how do you bring it out? Like how do you live? How, do you, how am I talking to you now? This is called yang. This is shown here by the left side of the circle, this yang process. How do you turn water into fire? Or in other words, how do you take the heaven principle that is in the middle, submerge, and you bring it to the outside that you see in the fire trigram, it's like on the outside now. Liu Yuan says, this is what the fire trigram has the yin sediment, and this is a whole other discussion we need at least one or two hours about talking about the fire inner circle, meaning the ability of the heart to separate this heaven principle so the whole body will become alive. Therefore, we start developing an entire discussion about the yin sediment in the heart. The, the body originally is a piece of material, meaning an earth. When you have a heart principle, it means it's the ability to separate heaven principle attached to the body. Therefore, when we're alive, I'm attached to material things. I want to eat apples, I want money, I want clothes. Meaning the discussion when we start talking about the fire inner circle and understanding yang, separation, is not a, a materialistic only discussion. Like I have energy, like electricity. Right? Normally in TCM when I used to learn was that kind of a discussion. 
yin is somehow the cold part of me and the fluid yang is somehow my electricity or the warming me up which is a fine concept it's not a bad concept but it's not maybe as deep as it could go now when we talk about yin yang as part of the sixth part of the circle uh, right now is that kind of a description I don't know if you're familiar with the ideas of Huang Yuan Yu, um, but he speaks about the idea that Taiyang is cold water, um, you know, sort of combining combining that the six heavenly qi and the and the wuxing from earth, um, you know, Taiyang becomes cold water. How does that manifest? But it's called root and manifestation or seen in the nature with, in the center, which all come from the Neijing and all the commentators picks up, picked up on it throughout the ages. This concept, which I find very, very relevant and interesting, is uh, the description of how our life is connected to heaven. Meaning the sixth transformation in heaven being the root of the manifestation is uh, that kind of a conversation meaning how is my body and its life is connected to heaven so when we say the Taiyang cold water which is of course an ancient concept or Yang Ming is dry metal Shao Yang minister fire and so forth all these so that means the root of this part of the circle finds itself in heaven in cold water the manifestation of it is the Taiyang in my body Therefore, there is this discussion in the Su Wen that says the Tai Yang you should see from its root or manifestation. The Yang Ming you should only see from its root. The Tai Yin, I mean the Yang Ming you should only see from its center. The Tai Yin only from its root. There is this detailed discussion. And this discussion is very, very interesting and required much development. <clears throat> Meaning here in, in this uh, interview, it, it has to be very limited, but it requires much uh, exploration. But this is the meaning of cold water, Taiyan, or Taiyan, cold water. Meaning the root of it is this concept that we call cold water. Here is described as this trigram. Now if I put the trigram on the circle, I'm going to draw them on the circle. The, the trigram of cold is this earth trigram. Earth is the cold trigram meaning it has no yang in it and again it's a little difficult to draw here but this is like if you can see this is the earth trigram even though the wiggling line and the water trigram is this trigram right it has yin line then yang line and yin line this is the water trigram if you can see it here this is called water cold water this construction is called cold water cold water means a dead body and heaven principle being to be sub is able to submerge in it. This is called cold water. Now, when you talk about Taiyang, Taiyang is at the exterior of the body. When the Neijing says the root of Taiyang is in cold water, its manifestation is in the separation principle of the body, in the outside, in the most outside of the body. This is a story of water and fire. We call this a water and fire story. I'm just furthering your question because you only asked about Taiyang, but I'll bring you the other end of it. The Su Wen also said the Shao Yin, you also need to see from the root and manifestation. The root of the Shao Yin is Emperor of Fire, which is this heaven, is our emperor on the other side, and the fire trigram which is also on the outside. These are all the separation instrument. This is the Emperor of Fire construction. The heaven and the fire together is on the outside. The root of our ability to recharge and have heaven principle in the body, like life of heaven, meaning the movement in heaven is actually in my body. The root of it is here. So therefore the Su Wan says when we talk about this axis, we also call it the vertical axis, that is represented by water and fire, by emperor of fire, and by cold water. These are all synonyms. This is what we call the vertical axis. And the Su Wan says when you talk about Shao Yin, you have to consider the problem from its root, which is emperor of fire, and its manifestation, which is at the bottom of the yin. When he talks about Taiyang, 
it says you have to consider its root which is called water and its manifestation which is the most yang the most outside of the circle this is the Shaoyang and I'm not sure if you want me to go ahead and talk about the other sides of the circle too but it all is part of this picture um, yeah I, I, I'd love to hear more just while we're staying with that Su Wen quote that talks about you should see it from the root or manifestation or just the root or look at it just from the center I'm sure you're aware of that quote so when he talks about the Yang Ming, which is dry metal, dry metal again has a long story to it, what dry means, what metal means, but here in, in a nutshell I would say that dry metal, the meaning of it is the prohibition of separation of, of, of Yang energy or for heaven principle. Meaning this is the point where the heaven principle cannot keep on going outside because then the energy does not come into my body. So the meaning of dry metal is to start prohibit this from happening or to start to conceal this separation. That's why the Yang Ming organs not only include the stomach and the large intestine but also the mouth and the digestive tract. This is where we start prohibit separation and we start bringing it into the body. Even though we keep on separating the apple but it starts going into the body. It's not anymore going away from us. It starts going in. This is the meaning of dry metal. But the Su Wen says when you look at the Yang Ming you, the problem here and what you need to discuss and contemplate is not from the root of the Yang Ming, it's not from dry metal, but rather from the center. The center, particularly of the Yang Ming, is what we call the Tai Yin, this department, or the damp earth. The root of the root of Tai Yin, the Su Wen says, is damp earth or Shi Tu. Damp earth talks about earth and water. The same thing like we're talking about at the bottom, cold water, or the ability to make water. The principle of damp earth is to be able to take heaven principle and not make it a dead body. This is damp earth. It's not really about digesting and water fluid in the earth, but rather it talks about the ability to submerge heaven principle into the dead body. This is damp earth. That's the meaning of it. And the Su Wen says, when you look at the Yang Ming, you need to look at it from the center oh, sorry the next patient has already tried to come in all right so i have to wait a little bit in any case you need to look at it from the center and the center of yang ming is the tie-in meaning when you talk about the prohibition of heaven and the energy start to conceal into the body what it is for is for the water principle to be created which is the tie-in principle the tie-in the Su Wan says you need to look at it from the root which is the damp earth meaning when you say the Yang Ming look at it from the center and Tai Yin look at it from the root means look at it from the same thing the center of Yang Ming is Tai Yin the root of Tai Yin is damp earth this is the meaning these two all what the Su Wan says you need to look at them from the damp earth principle which is again a large topic here I'm just mentioning it briefly we have what we call a horizontal axis meaning before I talked about the vertical axis the fire and water the Tai Yang and Shao Yin this is called vertical axis the right side of the circle also known in the Su Wen is calling as the descending part right there is entering and exiting and there is rising and descending these are like the four parts of the circle they describe the vertical axis of the Tai Yang and Shao Yin and the horizontal axis of Yang Ming and Tai Yin descending and Jue Yin and Shao Yang ascending. This is called the horizontal circle, uh, horizontal axis. But this is called seeing from the center, seeing from the root, and it's exactly the same on the left side of the circle, where the Su Wen says the Jue Yin, the root of which is wind wood, but it says you should not look at wind wood. Wind wood, the, the concept of it, you start to separate from the center. That's wind wood concept. What does it mean? The unification now ends and you start to separate it. This is wind wood. And again, big discussion there, I'm just mentioning it for a moment. The Shao Yang, which is a minister of fire, meaning the same fire that you brought from heaven to become yours in the Shao Yin, now you need to use it. This is the minister concept in antiquity, meaning the emperor is there giving orders to the ministers and they start to disperse it to the kingdom. This is the idea of the minister of fire. It's all one fire. We don't have two different kinds of fire. But there is one fire which means the heaven principle comes into me to become mine. 
and then that fire needs to be spread over the kingdom or to out the entire body. This is called the minister fire. And the Su Wen says, the Juayin, you need to see from the center. The center of the Juayin is the Shaoyang. This is the center. Many commentators throughout the history also explain that. When you look at the Shaoyang, you need to see it from the root, meaning from the minister fire. So when you talk about all this construction of Juayin and Shaoyang, or the left side of the circle, the rising part of the circle, this talks about how the fire expands out to the entire body. In my language, we call it the Shun principle. Whereas on the right side, meaning from the trigrams, the Shun trigram, which is like wind or spreading out principle, whereas the right side of the circle is called the Dewey principle, like the Dewey trigram, which is like the marsh or the damp trigram. So the damp earth on the right side using the Dewey trigram as a metaphor or an explanation, it means the heaven principle is submerging. The Shun principle or the Shun trigram on the left side of the circle describes the Jue Yin, seen from the center, the Shao Yang, seen from the root, is the separation or using up of that fire. This is the left and right, top and bottom of the circle. There are many more meanings to it and much to explore. I just, just don't want to fly too far and everybody doesn't know what's going on. But I just want to conclude this little assessment with all the many squiggly lines and circles. The vertical circle, the vertical axis of water and fire is not even anymore just in the physical body, but rather it's the lifeline that goes throughout the generation, passed to me and I pass to my children. It's that kind of a thing. When we are conceived, there's no body yet, there's no anything happening, no stomach or anything. We already have this life. When we talk about the horizontal axis, this is when the body of the baby is developed and we come into this world. And in order to sustain life, another day, another day, you know, eat apples and banana and sleep and make this interview and things like that, this is called the horizontal plane. So the ch ancient Chinese, which I believe has great merit to it, understood this kind of thing, and I know many people ask me, where is the quote, who said it, but this is the discussion about Jing and Wei exorcists from antiquity, and normally it will come in Confucian classics, not so much in the Su Wen, but this is a discussion about life that goes throughout the generation, and then every single life, every single person living in this realm, like going to the bananas, you know, separating my body to reach to the food, bringing the energy back so I can recharge and live another day, another day, another day. It's these two things that join together. And I don't want to do any, like, uh, a religious uh, thing, but this vertical and horizontal that join together is the meaning of what does it, what does it mean to be alive. Meaning the life that I get from my ancestor and I pass down, and my ability now to have a vessel to communicate with the surrounding, this is the horizontal and vertical. This is why we have that part of the circle, Yang Ming Tai Yin and Jue Yin Shao Yang, this which is the horizontal. And we also have this Tai Yang Shao Yang. They both need to be merged together into one circle. This is called being alive. Thanks. So this is that kind of... That was a really great explanation. I've... Um... I've never heard the idea of the of the root, the center, and the manifestation so so clearly explained. Um, so I I really appreciate that. Uh, I I think my sure. next question then would be, so how do we see this in our patients? So now uh, there's a short answer and long answer. Let me try to make a middle answer here. Uh, when we talk about the life unfolding with the different Tai Yin, Shao Yang, and all the compartments of it, at the end, meaning first the life starts to unfold like this. This is when we are conceived and the embryos start to develop. But then in order for me to survive, if you just take an embryo, let's say 10 weeks old, he's alive. There's a heartbeat. You put it on the table, the embryo very soon thereafter dies because it doesn't have a vessel. There's no place to breathe, there's no lungs, there's no stomach. You can't put apples in it. So its ability to live, if there's no mother to take the energy from the mother, like from the vessel of the mother, the baby cannot leave. So what happened in our life, this is the principle, that after we get the life, the physical body or the vessel needs to form 
in order for us to have tools to communicate with nature. To go to the apple tree, that's why I need legs and arms. I need to put the apple in my mouth, that's what I need teeth and mouth and stomach. I need other organs to separate it and take the energy from it. I need other organs and tissues to bind with it, to make it mine, and so forth and so forth. All these departments that I showed you on the circle, and let's just start another picture here because this gets a little bit too chaotic. At the end, when we talk about the vessel of the body, or the human body, we're talking about a bunch of organs and systems and tissues and muscles and bones and that kind of thing, like the Suwen and everybody else three, since antiquity talks about. It. Everybody knows we have a body. But the ancient concept, at least the way I see it, talking about the connectedness to heaven and so forth, explains, at least the way I can understand it, that having the different organs in the body are here to serve a particular purpose. In other words, the reason that we all have lungs and all of us have the lungs in the same place is for a specific reason. We all have stomachs and the, all of us have the stomach in the same place unless we are deformed or sick, then maybe not. But the, everybody who is healthy has the stomach in the same place. The kidneys, the lungs, the heart, everything is the same. The reason is, is that in order to have this compartment be able to do dry metal young me, you need to have these kind of organs to be able to accomplish this task. In order to have this department we call Taiyin or the opening of the Yin or in my language we call it concealed movement meaning movement of the energy now towards unification this is called concealed movement you can't see it anymore you need to have lungs and spleen and maybe some other tissues to accomplish this task and so forth and so forth along the circle you can see that all the different body parts organs and tissues bones muscles skin and everything is divided along this circle to help us accomplish something very simple we call unification and separation which means reaching to heaven or to nature or to food or to apple trees and then being able to bring it into the body and unify with the heaven principle and make it mine this is the very simple action of separation i'm drawing an arrow into separation and then an arrow that brings us into unification so now when we start to analyze the physical body how does it fit in the principle where is the stomach where is the lungs where is the kidneys what are the possible first we ask ourselves what does it mean when the tie-in works well I breathe well when I eat the digestion goes well and so forth and then we ask ourselves what does it mean then if in the tie-in or in this particular department the lungs can't breathe anymore where is it coming from how does it look like? Meaning, what are the symptoms, right? Shortness of breath, coughing, this, that, and that. So at the end, we do get to the place where we can see and analyze all the symptoms and all the diseases. And I have headache, and I feel hot, and I feel cold, and I have back pain, and I have diarrhea, and I have this and that. The things that we normally, like when I went to TCM school, that I study as the first place. Meaning, this is how you study medicine. You have some aches and pains. You need to realize the sim symptoms. And then you need to know what herbs or acupuncture can treat it, right? This is, became the scope of medicine. But I expanded it. I said, in really, if you want to understand medicine, you have to need to, you have to try the best you can to understand the principle or the working behind it. And then understand what the symptoms mean. This brings me also to the first question that you asked here. And you said, what should I recommend students, beginner students, to learn how to learn the six divisions or the Liu Jing? My recommendation is to try to dig into the principle as much as possible, meaning understanding yin, yang, and life, and what does it mean, and then how it's connected to the body to understand what each and every symptom means. So, for example, just preparing for the Hunyuan class that I have tomorrow, we're working now on the Shaoyin classes, and I'm bringing some quote from the Shaoyin chapter of the Shanghan Lun. And instead of doing the regular thing of saying, look, you have this bunch of symptoms, nobody really knows why. Why are these symptoms together? And then you have these formulas, and that should heal it. I actually show to my students, if you look very carefully at these quotes, you see 
Zhang Chongjing said or whoever compiled it, if it wasn't him, I don't really know if he did or not. You know, there is this discussion who really did the Shang Han Lun. And some other scholars said that there were actually many Shang Han Luns and uh, in the Song Dynasty they just chose this Shang Han Lun. Whatever, everyone the spin that they want to have. But I'm saying this particular text that we are dealing with from the Song Dynasty and on, if you look at it very carefully in the Shao Yin and many throughout the different chapters, you see it says if someone had, you know, let's say erroneous sweating and purging and this and that, and then you need to use this formula, whatever, Jen Wutang or whatever it was. And there could be coughing, and there could be diarrhea, endless diarrhea, and there could be this and that. All of a sudden, there's a bunch of other symptoms. So what people normally learn, that's how I learned it at the beginning, it says, look, there's formula to the main syndrome, and then there's modification. If you have diarrhea, then add something else. If you have vomiting, then add something else. That's how we see the medicine. But really, and this is from the class tomorrow, so my students themselves even don't know it, so we get it first. But really what this talk, what this talks about, is this what we call the one and two principle, not just the unification separation, but understanding this hori uh, vertical axis to be the foundation of life, meaning the water and fire, the recharging ability, this we call number one. Let me write number one here. Versus the, and you see there's number one there, versus the entire physical body, uh, make this arrow, see the entire physical body with all the different departments, Jue Yin, Shao Yang, and Yang Ming, and Tai Yin, and all this, with the being bloated, having diarrhea, having cough, having back pain, and all the other symptoms. I believe Zhang Zhongjing, or again, whoever wrote this text, had that kind of concept in mind because he says, look, and if you try to look for it, you'll see it. The main syndrome is, he says, the bottom is defeated. If the bottom is defeated, you need to use Fuzha and Jen Wutang and these kind of formulas. If you have this, if you have that, if you have this, if you have that, all kind of things around the circle, you still need to understand that you need to use Jen Wutang. That's what the, the text is saying. Not, I mean, some other pieces of the text says if you have coughing, add ban xia, if you have this, add this, add these herbs. Many of the quotes don't say that. They just say, if you have this bottom defeated, you use jen wutang, or you use fuling sinitang, and these kind of formulas. And then you can have cough, you can have uh, frequent urination, endless diarrhea, all these things around. Zhang Zhongqing makes a difference. It says, first save the bottom then you can rescue the rest of the body. It's this differentiation of one and two principle. All the different superfluous things and the core of life. This is often time he does this, need to pay attention. Thank you. It's so great to be able to, to learn from you and, and, and share that with the students uh, and, and, and to the greater uh, Chinese medicine community. That's you know part of the reason why I tried it. Well, we're all, all, all learning from each other. You know, we're all learning from Good. each other. Um, well, I feel like you've, you've given so much there to contemplate that I don't want to um, go any further with that unless there's anything you'd like to add. Thank you so much for sharing your perspective. Uh, I, I know you have patience. Um, I, so yeah. I'd just like to conclude by, by saying thank you, Dr. Seidman, for, for speaking with me and sharing your insights on the six stages, as well as medicine in general.